staying up late with a sick child. The bedroom door swung open and a dozen men with soot-covered faces burst into the room. Grabbing him by his arms and his legs, they wrestled Joseph out of his house. Seized by his throat, he was squeezed until his body went limp and dragged into the yard. Joseph, he awoke in a meadow some distance away, still being held tightly off the ground by men. Stretched out in the grass, half naked, a few feet away, is Sidney Rigdon. Forced across a wooden plank, Joseph was carried deeper into the meadow. His clothes were torn off, ready to be mutilated by a knife, but instead had sharp fingernails across Joseph's skin, leaving his body naked, lacerated, and raw. Recognized voices of friends or acquaintances were heard from men who were attacking Sydney. A bottle of acid chips, Joseph's tooth, as it was attempted to be poured down his mouth by filthy hands, forcing his jaw open. A paddle was forced to keep his mouth open and tar oozed over his lips, streaming into his lacerations and hair. Feathers were porn, poured. Tearing tar from his sensitive lips, gasping for air, having been left for dead, mangled beyond recognition, he asked for a blanket to cover his body, and his wife fainted. Lying in the fields most of the night, Sidney was delirious in bed, teetering from life and death. Still, Joseph preached that day. Three people were baptized. Oh Lord, my God. The last words spoken by Joseph in this exact spot, his brother Hiram was just shot dead when he darted for the window. As he straddled the window still, he was shot twice in his back and then right below his heart. Oh Lord, my God, he cried. And his body fell head first through the window down two stories to the ground. Willard Richard moves fast, past flying bullets to look out to see if Joseph was alive. Below, he saw the mob swarming around Joseph's bleeding body, still attacking him, even after no movement. The prophet lay on his left side next to a well, offering his life as a testimony of the reality of the gospel that we have in our laps right now. Maybe it was because I was at the Sacred Grove when I was learning about the church with the missionaries. Or maybe it was other things. But my awe and unwavering knowledge for Joseph and his life started long before I got baptized. And even after 10 years of deep study, ongoing, growing love and unshakable knowledge for him, nothing could have prepared me for when I stood in that spot. I had most of my lessons with the missionaries in the sacred grove when I was learning about the church. My first prayer I've ever said in my entire life is in the sacred grove. The first video I have ever seen about the church is the full length Joseph Smith movie that I have seen so many times in Palmyra that I still know every single word to that entire video. I have stood where Joseph himself has stood many times. I stood in the exact spot where Angel Moroni appeared to Joseph Smith three times in his bedroom. Now, I know, I know that there's a whole lot going on right now. There's a whole lot going on in the world. A ton of different viewpoints, a lot of passion, a lot of confusion, and, and so much. And it's challenging, right? Trying our best to figure it out what to do and what to say and what to stand up for amidst the confusion and, and the hurt and the passion and the conflicting or tiring, or hurtful, or exhausting, but, but in that moment, in that exact spot, my heart was beating so fast, and I felt my soul jolt within myself, and in this moment, I felt alive, and sure, and unstoppable, and, and whole, and I felt that there's, there's no way that this gospel is not true and that this work is not true and that God is not true and what we're working towards is not true. It's impossible. So yeah, maybe sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of the gunfire of the confusing, of the challenging and the conflicting. But then we have these moments in our life where we feel so deeply that you just know that heart pounding, soul jolting feeling is from God. And from this gospel. And I can't deny that every single time I had those feelings, those heart pounding, soul jolting feelings that I was living the gospel. And I was trying and I was turning to him. And I was seeking after him because I sure as heck never have felt that before, ever before I got baptized. 
I'm really grateful for those sometimes rare moments to help me stay focused on why we're here and what we need to be doing. I know how easy it is to get distracted or, or, or discouraged or hurt or, or confused or caught up in, but I hope we always hold to hope. And I hope we never deny, forget, or let passing time dim the reality of sacred experiences that we have. And that we take time to take a step back and be elated, be elated by all that we have, that all that we know because of God and this gospel, be elated by the reality that we have the answers to the questions of the universe. I am elated to participate in a living, breathing gospel that grows through Revelation daily. I am elated to participate in anything that God sees fit, regardless of our narrow-mindedness and personal pursuits. I guess I'm just feeling really grateful because of it all, because that we have the answers to the questions of the universe.